Hi, I'm Andy from Revolt Systems. I'm Snow. We're here with a brand new product, and today it's not for our land speed cars or dragsters or any of our race vehicles. It's to address a problem with a Tesla large drive unit. Now, this thing is a wonderful motor. It's been in Teslas for, man, over a decade now. Yeah. But there is one major flaw to this motor is the rear seals will leak. Not if, but when. So all of you guys out there that have a Tesla Model S, Model X, either performance or base, with a large drive unit inside of it, eventually you're gonna develop a problem that's going to leak into your motor. Coolant will wipe out the rotor and eventually work its way over to the inverter and completely render your drive unit useless. So when that happens, you're gonna get a huge bill from Tesla to put a brand new drive unit in there. We developed a system to save these before they go bad. Now, if yours is already flooded, it's probably too late. But if yours is still driving and operating correctly, we have a solution to fix the problem of the leaky seal. So now, how many of these things do we see leaking now? Well, initially, yeah, maybe you see 10, 12%, but now you're getting close to 30, 40% of them that we get in that need those, that, well, the delete kit. Exactly. So what we did is um, Tesla has a basically a coolant channel that goes to the inside of the rotor. There's a PTF seal inside here that eventually will go bad. What happens is that fluid then goes through the motor, through the rotor, down in the inverter, and as I said, wipes everything out. If you're out of warranty, this is a kit for you. If you're still under Tesla's warranty, stop this video, go back to Tesla, talk to them. But this is about a four or $500 part. We'll save you, I think these are, God, between five and $10,000 oh, yeah. each one of these are put At least. So this is our coolant delete kit. It goes on the very end of this motor and will prevent any future leaks and will save your entire motor and inverter system from catastrophic failure. So. Um, let's take a look at what that entails to replace and how simple this is to do. Now, this is a drive unit that is out of one of our vehicles. Don't do this at home, but if you have a trained professional to remove this from your vehicle, it doesn't take very long. It's about a half day's of work. And then to put the coolant delete kit on it, it takes about five minutes once the drive unit is removed from the vehicle. So now let's take a look on how that's done. All right. So you're going to need a couple tools to do this. And this is going to be basic stuff. So, AB, what do we have right there? We have a 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter socket. Then you're going to need a little bit of a pry bar there. Nothing major, right? And then the other part of the kit is going to be the block off. And the last thing you definitely want to have, it's, this is a 5 millimeter drill bit. And the reason for that is... When they put the seal, um, the cap on, they use a silicone that gets into the holes. So once you remove the bolts, you try to put a new one in, there's silicone in there, it doesn't compress, it'll strip the bolts out. So that's why we use that. Here we go. So while Snow's doing this, um, our kit does come with everything you'll need to replace the actual cooling system. So basically it comes with our block off plate, another block off plate for the other side of the motor, and all the hardware you will need to reinstall this into your system. Also full sets of instructions, and we'll have another video that goes into detail on exactly how to do this. Perfect, now this is the cooling rod. This is being removed from the actual driving it. So you go ahead and discard this. Now this is the inlet side of the motor. This is where all the fluid goes into the drive unit from the cooling system of the car. Now this is the original stock Tesla manifold. I have one here in my hand as well. So as the coolant passes into this channel, it gets split into two different directions. One of the directions is to go through the water jacket that cools the actual stator of the motor. And the other one is to pick up heat out of the rotor. Now, this is no longer necessary. And we've tested this on multiple vehicles of ours. Even all of our motors that we sell have this kit put into them because we don't want anyone returning certain motors because they had leaky problems. We did have one motor come back to us uh, early on from a customer. It was completely 100% seized. He parked the car for a few months, 
uh, because it is a race car. We don't really drive them that much. And then one day he went to go push the car out of his uh, garage and the back wheels were completely locked up because the rotor was flooded in with the coolant. And once that happens, it basically rusts into one giant piece of metal. So when you pull this off, notice I used a little pry bar. Be very careful. Don't wrench on that. But there's a, a space here. Just pry it up, pry it up, and this comes straight out. There we go. Yeah, this one's pretty bad. So yeah. Huh? You let that drip out and you'll see blue coolant come out of this. That's absolutely normal. And this is a failed seal inside of here. So what happens is there's a rotor that spins pretty fast anywhere between zero to up to 16,000 RPM. And the surface speed eventually wears out this seal. Once the seal gets worn out, that's when the fluid could pass through. It blows out the rear bearing inside of this motor and then works the way all the way across into the inverter once i get once again like i said if that happens that's a catastrophic failure okay now that we have that off in the sake of time where's that piece so what we do is we put silicone you said it so we put silicone put a bead around and what that's going to do is going to keep you from getting dirt and you know liquid inside there which also road debris and dust and everything else. You want to keep this back bearing as clean as possible. So this all comes with our kit. So we're going to be here. And then it's just as simple as putting this thing back together. All right. Make sure. So there's six bolts holding this into the actual motor itself. Uh, make sure that the O-ring down at the very bottom is clean when you assemble this all back together. There's a kidney-shaped O-ring in there. Um, just inspect it, make sure it's fine. Um, it's nice to put a little bit of lube on there, so any kind of type of ATF or, or grease would work as well. Okay. So these are four main bolts that hold the plate together. And all the torque specs and everything come with our installation sheet, so you'll know exactly what to do. Now, when you remove the old one, there are two pieces that you need to remove from the actual manifold. One of them is an encoder sensor, and the other one is your inlet. So these come off of the old unit and onto the, onto the new unit. There's your inlet, it goes on the bottom. That also has an O-ring in it. Make sure you clean and inspect that as well. This also has an O-ring on it. Make sure that's cleaned and inspected as well. Once again, if you have difficulty getting it in, you can apply a little bit of grease or a little bit of oil on this O-ring and it'll slide right in for you. Bottom one's done. Here's the top one. There's our encoder. There. Okay. Use the screw. So now what we've done is completely replace the cooling system manifold to our new block off plate and this will solve all the leaky problems that you will have down the road. Let's get this guy in. Yep. So last but not least, this part caps off the old inlet for There's the coolant. Verify that you have that O-ring. Yep. Once again, if it needs lubrication, do that as well. Come on. Don't need the other one because it came from the other side. Perfect. That's how fast they install. Once again, the hardest part of this is getting the motor out of the car. Once again, if you haven't done this before, please go to a trained professional for it. And this is not for vehicles that are under Tesla's warranty. This will void your warranty. So do not do this if your car still is under coverage. Hope this is helpful. Once again, this is something that we've seen for many, many years. It's becoming a huge problem in the industry. I don't know how many people are having these failed Teslas right now. Yeah, no, there's a lot. I've talked to a couple of other you know, businesses that repair Teslas. And yeah, yeah really, I mean, you're looking at even one of these out of a junkyard costs about $5,000. And then you have to set up someone inspect it, do all this to it. Um, and as I said, almost half of them that come out of junkyards are flooded. So be very, very careful, careful with that. I think we covered everything, Snow. Yeah. All right. Well, I hope this helps. This is a big fix, not only to us, but we decided that since we use it here in-house, we're going to extend it out to you guys for all those Tesla owners out there. Model S, Model X, performance, and base 
large drive units. So even the all wheel drive cars, some of them have these large drive units in the rear. So check out your vehicle, look online, you check your VIN number as well. If that matches up for a large drive unit, we also call them LDUs. This is a fix for your car. Thank you.